Hello, and welcome to this Fidere Swap Mis-Selling presentation. We will cover four key topics. What are swaps? Are swaps hedges or gambles? What's wrong? What can Fidere's do? So, what are swaps? A swap is an agreement between two parties to exchange cash flows. This means that each party makes payments to the other party where the payments are calculated using a different formula or benchmark rate. Bank clients usually enter into swap agreements in order to reduce or eliminate uncertainty of the amount of future cash flows or payments they are due to pay or receive. Such uncertainty can, for example, arise from movements in interest rates or fluctuations in foreign exchange rates. In this presentation, we focus on interest rate swaps. However, there are other types of swaps which could have been affected, such as currency swaps and commodity swaps. Here is an example. A client takes out a five-year, one million pound loan from its bank. The loan interest payments are at a rate of LIBOR plus 2%. If the LIBOR rate increases, the amount of interest payable on the loan also increases. The borrower, therefore, is exposed to the risk that it does not know how much interest it will have to pay in two or three years' time. In order to reduce this risk, the client could purchase an interest rate swap from its bank. The interest rate swap also has a notional of one million pounds. For the two streams of cash flows, it is agreed that the bank will pay LIBOR to the client and the client agrees to pay a fixed rate of, say, 4%. Both payments are calculated using the same one million pound notional. This leaves the client the following cash flows on the payment dates. Make a loan payment of LIBOR plus 2%. Receive a payment of LIBOR from the bank under the swap make a payment of 4% to the bank under the swap. Overall, the client has fixed his payment obligations at a fixed rate of 6%, 4% from the swap and 2% from the margin on the loan. As we have just seen, swaps are useful instruments that can be used to hedge or reduce risk. However, under certain circumstances, they can transform themselves into gambles. For example, a maturity mismatch is when there is a gap between the maturity of the swap and that of the loan. After the maturity of the loan, the client would still have to make the agreed payments under the swap contract. From that point onward, the client is exposed to fluctuations in the LIBOR rate, but in a different way. If LIBOR is lower than 4%, the fixed rate payable to the bank, the client will pay more than it receives. So the client is at risk if interest rates fall. Another example is embedded optionality. If the swap contract can be terminated by the bank before the maturity date, the client could lose its hedge against rising interest rates exactly at a time when it was needed. A final example is an exotic formula. Some swaps have very complex formula for the calculation of the interest rate payments owed by the client or the bank, which can hide some risks that are difficult to analyze or understand. Swaps are a large source of revenues for banks. For example, in 2014, the worldwide gross market value of derivative contracts was equal to $20.9 trillion. This was more than the GDP of the USA for the same period which was $17.4 trillion. Also, swaps are so-called over-the-counter transactions. This means that there is no central marketplace like an exchange where prices can be easily observed. Instead, banks may be able to charge a higher profit margin given the opacity of the swap market. The FCA investigation into swap mis-selling has shown how bank employees were pressured into selling more derivatives to their clients. But in practice, what types of wrong behavior have been exposed? Firstly, the swap negotiation process is characterized by an asymmetry of information. Since banks have more knowledge of swaps than their clients, they are able to skew the process in their favor. This encourages banks, for example, to make swaps more complex. Higher complexity generally translates into less transparent product pricing and larger profits for the banks. When dealing with clients who are classified as sophisticated, banks do not typically owe them a duty of care. They deal with customers at arm's length and try to maximize their profits. Secondly, many of these swaps have been affected by the bank's manipulation of benchmarks. For example, LIBOR suppression from 2007 to 2012 would have damaged any fixed rate payer in interest rate swaps. Federes has estimated that, during this period, LIBOR suppression may have averaged around 0.5%. So, what can Federes do to help those who feel they may have been damaged? Federes has significant experience in the analysis of swaps and other derivative products. We offer various services, including swaps pricing, valuation, and damages calculation. Suitability analysis, the analysis of whether the swaps sold to clients by the banks were suitable for their purpose. 
We see how well the products sold actually hedged the risk of the client, and whether other products may have been more suitable. This analysis has to be conducted by reference to the client's communicated needs and specific circumstances. Market practice analysis. Did the bank comply with relevant best market practice? Did its staff act according to the FCA code of conduct? Were the risks of the product adequately presented? Were the valuations provided by the bank correct? Did the bank act negligently at any time throughout the life cycle of the transaction? If you have further questions, please visit our website or call us on 020-3397-5160. Fideres. Use knowledge. Take action.